Heading into the magnificent Mongolian steppe, a vast stretch of wilderness, one of the great sparsely populated regions of the world. It's a country of 3 million people and 40 million animals, the backbone of the country's economy for hundreds of years. But a summer drought last year has been followed by a bitterly cold winter that has destroyed grazing and killed millions of animals. It's known as a Zud, and it has placed the time-honoured occupation under threat. I hope that when it gets warm, it will be better. The blizzards were very strong. It has just got a little warmer. There are no guarantees. There is some grazing, but it's becoming harder to find, and the winter could last another two months. A newborn goat struggles to its feet, a cheery sight among the carnage littered throughout Mongolia's plains. Wherever you look, carcasses are piled up in eerie funeral mounds. The death toll so far stands at around 3 million livestock, many simply froze to death in temperatures which plummeted to minus 45 degrees centigrade. Chulabata is 69, a herder all his life. So far he's lost 200 head of cattle, sheep, horses and goats. He says it's the worst winter in 50 years and the losses mean that he can no longer be self-sufficient. In the coming weeks, our fate will be decided. If the Zut strikes again, it will be even worse for us. They've moved two times in recent weeks looking for grazing, but it's becoming harder to find and they have to travel further and further afield. They try to get a cow to move. If it doesn't, it will die. Success this time, but for how much longer? It's so hard for someone like me who has spent all his life with animals to watch them die. There's no worse ordeal I can suffer. The herders are nomadic people and have lived this way for hundreds of years, pitching their tented homes in an area stretching from the Gobi Desert in the south to the Russian border in the north. They provided the food and the clothes for Mongolia and parts of China and enjoyed a richness of life now at risk of disappearing. Even for tough people used to harsh conditions, this terrible winter has proved a stern test for many of the herders of Mongolia, a test that many have failed. But it's not just a case of dead livestock. Animals to these people represent not only a sense of livelihood, but also a sense of family, and many are losing both. He froze. Jozud's whole life's investment was in his livestock. The winter has decimated his herd, leaving him with just a few head of cattle and some sheep and goats, not enough to provide for his wife and four children. I'm so disappointed with myself because I couldn't do much for the dying animals, but there was nothing I could do. And I'm very sad about that one cow lying dead because she was giving much milk. With most of our animals gone, we have to move to town and try to find a job, but it won't be that easy for us. Without our animals, we are lost, and our good years as herders are finished. There have been droughts and bad winters before, but this could be the defining one. With too many animals and not enough grazing, the World Bank has pressured Mongolia's livestock industry to change, labelling it as unsustainable. And a move to a free market economy in the 90s ended state support that gave emergency help in previous years. But in a country where a third of the population live below the poverty line and jobs are scarce, what will become of the herders? For old people like me nearing the end of their life, it is okay. But what about the young people without support? What about them? They are the descendants from the era of Genghis Khan. Their profit is defined by clothes on their back, the food in their bellies and the health of their livestock. That world, like many of their treasured animals, is quickly disappearing. Tony Bertley, Al Jazeera, Central Mongolia.